Hey everybody, Raven here, and today I want to talk about the Henning Nickel, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that was brought to my attention recently uh, about this counterfeit nickels at, at different years that exist. And this book here, written by Joseph P. Cronin, Cronin, The Henning Nichols Collector's Guide, was a gift sent to me by the one and only Change of Hand Coin Rings. Matter of fact, Change of Hand Coin Rings information is going to be down below. If you can jump over there and give them some sub love, that would be awesome. But the crazy thing about this is, come to find out these nickels are highly sought after and worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And this complete guide here tells you all the little di different markers and things to look for to find this truly interesting run of different years of counterfeit nickels that to a lot of people would be indistinguishable but this book here really helps point out the things that you can look for to figure out if you have a Henning nickel in your searches. Now let's talk about the Henning nickel and its history. They were created by Francis Leroy Henning from Ariel, New Jersey. Why did he make these nickels? Well, to make money, of course. And his idea was to create a counterfeit of a popular and well-circulating coin that would blend in and be almost indistinguishable from the real coin itself. How was he going to make this happen? Well, in the 50s, Henning chose to mass produce the 1944 nickel using actually real nickel instead of the uh, current year's composition of 35% silver, 9% manganese, and 56% copper. Now, that leads to a problem later down the road. And uh, the other thing that that happened is this entire endeavor backfired on him because he forgot to put the P mint mark on the back here. As you can see in the cover of the book, there's no P on the 1944. And that is a key thing that people look for, for the 35% silver war nickels. And uh, that really, really came to bite him in the rear end, so to speak. Uh, but you know what? There's more. He actually applied... Uh, different dates other than the 1944. He's 1939, 46, 47, 1953. And there's also a sixth year that uh, is inside this book, which is really cool. Uh, many believe that had Henning not made the mistake of the 1944 nickel where he omitted the Philly mint mark, that others that he counterfeited in different years would have been virtually indistinguishable from the genuine ones made by the United States Mint. Henning was arrested in Cleveland, Ohio in 1955 after he had escaped from a, a prison in New Jersey. And although he made hundreds of thousands of counterfeits, he never gained any substantial wealth from this endeavor. Um, I think this book is absolutely amazing. Uh, when you turn it over, it talks about all sorts of different stuff. Matter of fact, you can pause and read this. But one of the cool thing, or some of the cool things, is it says it's a brief history of the counterfeiting scheme and large, high definition color photos with close ups that give you a great idea of the things you should be looking for. An overview of dates and evidence proving that there is a sixth date. Uh, In-depth uh, look at some of the well-known dye markers and discovery of many new ones proving there weren't just two, but several reverse dyes Henning used to mint his fakes. Um, so a really cool book that is very comprehensive. And I was really fortunate to be uh, given a autographed copy right there. Mr. Cronin signed it and he said, good luck finishing those or finding those Henning nickels. Best wishes. And again, I want to say a big thank you and shout out to Change Hand Coin Rings because this is an insanely epic book. The, the, these sell for $90, um, you know, retail. But here's the thing. If you find a Henning Nickel, these are going for $400, $500 uh, across the board and actually are selling pretty easily because people really like... Well, outlaws, you know, uh, in, in the United States, we celebrate people like Billy the Kid and Jesse James and other things like that. So it's not surprising that these um, type of nickels have a popular demand and people really want to get some in their collection because it is 
one really they they're really good fakes that he made he did a really excellent job and honestly like we said before had he not made the mistake he probably wouldn't have been found and uh you've probably had hitting nickels go through your hands and not even know it my friends so again very very cool if you want to get the hitting nickels collector's guide i'm sure mr cronin would appreciate more people buying the book and uh, taking a look at the nickels they have in circulation and uh, also uh, maybe what you have in your piggy bank. You just never know what you'll get. If you want to correspond, it's ravenhawkcoins at gmail.com. Our PO box is 721-296, Norman, Oklahoma, 73070. Like always, please make sure to take care of one another, and we'll see you real soon. Ravenhawk Coins, have a great day.